Big banks complaining they're being unfairly targeted by politicians eager to seize on Occupy Wall Street movement's energy. Now bankers are threatening to make it very expensive for politicians to support the protests. Our fourth story tonight, Wall Street donors saying they will not support Democrats who side with OWS. At the same time, local governments sympathetic to the movement are realizing that going after banks, as protesters have urged, may prove extremely costly. As if a reminder of the financial might of the banks, Morgan Stanley today reporting a profit of $2 billion, $200 million for the third quarter of this year. Meanwhile, Goldman Sachs, along the object of protesters' ire, reporting a decline for the same quarter. That is, it should be noted, only its second loss since it went public more than one decade ago. Bankers now flexing their financial muscle elsewhere, threatening to bury Democrats if they don't stop picking on them. Anthony Scaramucci, managing partner of a New York investment firm, donated to Obama in 2008, but is now fundraising for Romney. He tells Politico, most Wall Street guys, they feel like they're going to be burned in effigy. No jokes. 2008, then-candidate Obama got more Wall Street donations than John McCain did, but this year, things are different. Mitt Romney, formerly, of course, of the money industry, is now outpacing President Obama. Romney nearly doubling the president's haul from the finance, insurance, and real estate sectors this year. President Obama seems to have been taking notice of this at the Martin Luther King Memorial dedication on Sunday. He said the civil rights leader would not have painted all of Wall Street with just one brush. I believe he would remind us that the unemployed worker can rightly challenge the excesses of Wall Street without demonizing all who work there. Are you sure? At the local level, it is also proving costly for city and state governments to be sympathetic to protesters. L.A., for example, has been more than welcoming to them, more than any other city, perhaps, allowing protesters to stay in an urban encampment despite a law that normally prohibits sleeping overnight in parks. Mayor Villaraigosa even handed out ponchos to rain-soaked protesters. And last week, lawmakers asked city analysts to expand a plan to punish misbehaving banks. But now a major roadblock to that. Analysts found that penalizing the banks could cost the city upwards of $58 million, and some politicians who previously supported the protesters now say it's simply too expensive to accede to their demands and actually rein in those banks. Joining me now, economist Dean Baker, co-founder of the Center for Economic Policy and Research and author of The End of Loser Liberalism, Making Markets Progressive. Mr. Baker, thanks for your time tonight. Thanks a lot for having me on. It's so simple that we sometimes forget this. The biggest advantage that Wall Street has in this is money because in cash or in coin or in check or just by threat, it's, it's useful everywhere, including the pressuring of people, correct? Absolutely. I mean, obviously, uh, politicians look to their campaign contributions, politicians of both parties. And as you just pointed out, President Obama got more money from Wall Street than John McCain did. So this is a big, big deal. And, you know, if, if the president is going to continue to support protesters, if he's actually going to push an agenda that does hurt Wall Street, he's not going to get campaign contributions from them, no doubt about it. Uh, analyze the Los Angeles situation for me. I'm not sure I get what the $58 million uh, loss would entail. Well, the, the argument here is that if they were to take into account uh, corporate behavior, banks' behavior, then they would end up paying more for bond issues for other financial transactions. I don't know enough about the specifics to say whether or not that's true, but I will say there's, there seems to be an implicit assumption that they're getting the lowest cost financial services now, and I think that's very questionable. You had, uh, just give an example here, Steve Ratner, who was uh, President Obama's car czar originally, he ended up paying $10 million to the Securities and Exchange Commission in a settlement where it was claimed that he, in a sense, had paid off state officials to get control of their pension funds. Now, if that were true, clearly he wasn't the lowest cost person. So I don't know that we could presume that Los Angeles is now getting the lowest cost services, that they would actually be paying more if this, this law were put into effect. Hmm. Is there a suspicion, then, that um, that's being deliberately misunderstood so that some, some uh, politicians can get out from, from this uh, support for what they might have thought was a transient uh, movement in Occupy? Well, I think one has to look at it closely. Again, a lot of these things do require closer examinations. I, and, you know, I have to say, I just don't know enough about the specifics of Los Angeles' mm -hmm. finances to say one way or another. But I think it would be a very heroic assumption to assume that they're always getting the lowest cost services today. What do you think is at the heart of, of the Wall Street reaction? Is this business or is this a personal peak and hurt? Because in my career, in my business, the biggest prima donnas, the guys who always take it the most personally, are the ones who are supposed to be the cold, calculating, bean-counting businessmen who don't care what you say about them as long as you write their name on a check. Uh, is it, are they offended or are they threatened? <clears throat> 
Well, I think at the moment they are offended because, you know, thus far, better or worse, President Obama has been very business friendly, very Wall Street friendly. Now, if this goes in a direction where you actually see things that really change the way Wall Street does business, a financial speculation tax, break up the big banks, then it's going to be very much in their pocketbooks. But to date, President Obama has not supported those measures. Would, uh, would the president uh, really be getting the support of Wall Street if he had a different point of view, even if he came out tomorrow and, 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 and said, no, we got to shut down, occupy Wall Street, go home, everybody go home, everything's been solved? Well, I think that's possible. I mean, you know, there's a lot of aspects, you know, you joke about this, but it's real. A lot of aspects of the Republican candidates, I think a lot of people on Wall Street find scary. So, you know, if President Obama says, look, I, I'm willing to look out for your interests every bit as much as the Republicans, and I'm sane and these guys aren't, um, he will get support from Wall Street. I don't think there's any doubt about that. And how, uh, how, how frightening a prospect, how realistic a prospect do you think that is? Well, I probably would, if I had to place a bet, I think he is going to, at the end of the day, be more likely to side with the Wall Street people than the Occupy Wall Street people, better or worse. I think that's the case. Wow. He does that at the peril of his reelection in another way. Dean Baker, the author of The End of Loser Liberalism. Great. Thanks for your insight, sir. Thanks for having me on. In a weird, tiny way, it's kind of a sign of how quickly Occupy Wall Street has occupied a spot in the public collective mind. Surfing the crowd to cast a new series of The Real World? Filming a scene in a Batman movie in the protest and some putts putting out a sexist video of the hot chicks of OWS. The cultural foothold ahead.